Hey guys, welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. In today's episode, we're gonna do a breakdown of exactly how you would read a box score, either online or in the newspaper or anywhere one might be available. So what I'm gonna do is, instead of looking at me the entire episode, because that's not gonna teach you how to read anything, uh, I'm gonna pop up a box score from ESPN on the screen from a random game, and we are gonna go through it line by line so I can show you all the different ins and outs of how you understand it and how to make sense of it. So by the time we get to the end of this episode, you'll be able to pull up any box score and know exactly what everything means using a lot of the basic stats that I've taught you throughout the previous episodes that we've done. So without any further ado, I'm going to pop up one of those box scores and we're going to go through it and I will do a little bit of a voiceover magic, I guess. I'm not really sure. All right, so here we have the most basic form of a box score. This just tells us the winner and loser. Regardless of which team wins, the away team will always be on top and the home team will always be on the bottom, no matter what the score. It also lists the number of hits, listed as H, and the number of errors, listed as E. It'll also show us the winning and losing pitcher, and in the case of the Reds game, it actually indicates which pitcher got the save. Next, we find ourselves with an inning-by-inning inning breakdown, which shows us precisely where and in which innings all of the runs of the game were scored. For example, in the top of the seventh inning, we can see that the Rays scored two runs, and the Red Sox only run came in the bottom of the second inning. Here we get even more detail with a complete list of the batters for the game in the order they are in the lineup. This will also list any player substitutions. This view gives us a complete breakdown of how each player performed during the game. The AB number indicates the number of at-bats the player had during the game. The R indicates any runs scored by that particular player. The H indicates the number of hits that player had in the game. RBI indicates any runs batted in that player scored during the game. BB indicates if that batter was walked at all. K tells us how many times they struck out. And we're also given an updated version of their average, on-base percentage, and slugging for the season up to that point. Here's a closer look where we can see each of the player's positions, as well as an indication that Chi Man Choi came in to pinch hit for Daniel Robertson. At the bottom, we can also see the game total for the number of runs, hits, RBIs, walks, and strikes. We also get a complete breakdown of all the pitchers used throughout the game. IP indicates innings pitched, and the point .1 and point .2 indicate the number of batters into an inning each of the pitchers went. Hits indicates the number of hits they gave up, R is the number of runs scored against them, and ER indicates earned runs or the number of runs that a pitcher is directly responsible for, meaning they weren't scored on an error. BB indicates the number of walks that pitcher gave up, and K indicates the number of strikes they were able to get. HR indicates the number of home runs that pitcher gave up in the game. PC stands for pitch count, or the total number of pitches that pitcher threw throughout the game. ST tells us how many of those pitches were thrown for strikes. ERA tells us what that pitcher's season ERA is as of the end of that game. We can also see the starting pitcher Rodriguez's season record. He got the loss for this game and now has a 6-4 and four win-loss record for the season. In this game, he threw five complete innings and got two outs in the sixth. We can tell this because of the point two following the five in the IP column. Both Hembry and Walden were used for one out apiece, which we can tell because of the .1 in each of their IP columns. Hembry only used six pitches, three of them strikes, and got a strikeout, so we can tell he probably only faced one batter. Walden, on the other hand, gave up two runs on only three hits, so he was probably having a little bit more of a difficult time, even though he only used 15 pitches. Not a great day to get that out. All right, guys, that is how you read a baseball box score online. Hope you found that helpful and you are now feeling a lot more comfortable going through and reading any box score online that you might happen across from now on. So I hope if you like it, you give it a big thumbs up down below. I hope you remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell if you wanna be notified every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday when we have a new episode go live. And remember, you can follow me on social media. I'm at 90 feet from home everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you guys enjoyed that and we'll see you back next time. Have a great day. Bye.